Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Unless you live there, you might not think of Salisbury as a port city, but it is. Salisbury is connected to the Chesapeake Bay by the Wicomico River. Often you can see lumbering along the small river tugboats and other sizable ships that are produced or refurbished at Chesapeake Shipbuilding. Since the early days when Delmarva was a British colony, land-owning sea captains like Samuel Summers, Tom White, and Levin Gale used their plantations along the Wicomico River as a home base for their merchant vessels. They traveled to the Caribbean to purchase sugar, molasses, and rum. Up and down the Atlantic coast, they traded their inventory. Meanwhile, back at home, their plantations produced tobacco and corn. These enterprising individuals and other settlers had arrived here with little or no financial resources. Some were indentured servants who had completed their contracts. Some were early recipients of land grants from Lord Baltimore. Some were entrepreneurs who had been given 50 acres of land for each person they brought into the colony. This included servants and slaves. A landowner in England whose estates could no longer support all of the people living on it was happy to make such a generous offer to help ease their own burden. The colonies were set up much the way the shires in England were. These precursors to our system of counties were divided into sections of 100 acres. Within them, church parishes served as the center of community and commerce. In 1692, Stepney Parish was established combining the Wicomico and Nanacoke hundreds of what was then Somerset County. Green Hill was a property there that lay at the head of the Wicomico River. This may have been a traditional gathering place for the earlier native peoples in the region. This is where Isaac Handy settled. He also was a sea captain and plantation owner. The area became known as Handy's Landing until Salisbury Town was created by an act of assembly August 8, 1732. It is believed to have been named for Salisbury in Wiltshire, England, which is just eight miles from Stonehenge. Many believe that it was called Salisbury because some of the local landowners or their ancestors had emigrated from that area in their mother country. Another theory is that Lord Baltimore wanted the name in honor of his friendship with James Cecil, 6th Earl of Salisbury. Like the Baltimores, the Cecils were devout Catholics. Isaac Handy, along with John Caldwell, Ebenezer Handy, Thomas Gillies, and John de Chiroon, were named commissioners to oversee the purchase of 15 acres of the property called Pemberton's Goodwill. They bought this from the child heir of John Winder for the purpose of building a town. Handy had already started building a wharf there, and the town was intended to be a port and center of trade for the region. The town grew at a measured pace for the next decade. In 1742, Worcester County was carved out of Old Somerset County, and Salisbury was essentially cleaved in two. For over a hundred years, this did not sit well with the local residents. When the Civil War broke out, a railroad was being built in Salisbury but the crisis brought construction to a halt. After the war, the tracks were completed. As the town continued to grow, a logistical problem developed. If you lived east of Division Street, you went to Snow Hill to attend to legal matters, such as deeds of transfer or civil and criminal court matters. Those that lived on the west side had to go to Princess Anne. Both destinations were an inconvenient trip. So, four prominent families, the Grahams, Jacksons, Leonards, Todds, and Toadvines led the campaign to have their own county. It took some legislative wrangling, but Wicomico County was created by an act of the Constitutional Convention of 1867 and was ratified later that fall by Maryland voters. Salisbury was made its seat of government and the location of its district court and continued to thrive. Within two decades, Maryland elected Salisbury resident Elihu Emory Jackson, to be its governor. He served one four-year term beginning January 11, 1888. Since then, this city has become known as the Crossroads of Delmarva, and it is the epicenter of the peninsula's culture and economy with the development of Salisbury University and employers like Purdue Poultry. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, visit our website, delmarvaalmanac.com history. 
Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, and next week join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com slash support. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters eatdrinkbyart.com for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs>